Zoe is owned and managed by the Linux Foundation as part of the Open Mainframe project. Its goal is to provide a platform for access to the mainframe using tools that are open, simple, and familiar. Information about Zoe can be found at zoe.org. This includes links to downloads, documentation, technical blogs, as well as GitHub repositories where all of Zoe's open source code is developed and maintained by its community of committers. Zoe is composed of four main components. A command line interface, a Visual Studio Code extension, known as the Zoe Explorer, a web user interface, accessible through a desktop router, and a powerful API mediation layer. Let's look at each of these in more detail. The command line interface, or CLI, allows the user to issue commands from their PC to directly operate the monitor mainframe. CLI commands are broken down into groups. The core set includes ones to work with datasets, where you can list datasets for a file, list the members of a PDS, download members to your PC, and submit job control language datasets to the JES queue. The jobs group allows you to list jobs by prefix, owner or status, view a list of spool files, as well as content for an individual spool file. The Unix system services view, you can create directories, upload files from your PC, as well as you can issue Unix commands directly within USS. Other core command groups allow you to issue TSO commands, create and manage workflows. Because the CLI is running on the user's laptop, it can be embedded and executed from other tools on the same machine, such as those for DevOps, CICD pipelines, automation scripts, and other scenarios where mainframe orchestration is required. This allows a developer familiar with their existing software suite to seamlessly use the Zoe CLI to perform mainframe tasks. All of this is done with encrypted communication using the laptop's native credential store. As well as core capabilities, Zoe CLI is built with an extensible framework. This allows additional plugins to be installed, such as those for Kix, DB2, and other mainframe runtimes. This is done using an extensible API, such as software vendors can build their own CLI plugins using these fully supported interfaces and extension points. The Zoe Conformance program is a certification process that issues badges to extensions to have built, packaged, and executed using these APIs. This ensures consistency of end user experience and compatibility between plugins. A number of extensions are already available from vendors, including CA Endeavor, IBM ZOS Connect, Phoenix Software eJazz, and more. The second component to look at is the Zoe Explorer, an extension to the popular Visual Studio Code integrated development environment. With the Zoe Explorer installed from the marketplace, it can be launched from the Zoe icon in the VS Code sidebar. The Zoe Explorer has three navigator views for datasets, Unix system services, and jobs. Let's have a quick look at each one. For datasets, they can be filtered, showing a tree view that allows you to expand into the members of a partition dataset, together with a pop-up menu of actions for create, rename, delete, and more. The menu for PDS member allows you to submit it to a job, which then brings up a hyperlink with a job ID from which you can directly open its spool files. The Jobs Navigator itself allows you to filter by owner ID and prefix or job ID. Jobs can be expanded to see their spool files, which are opened in the editor area, allowing to use VS Code features such as searching for strings or navigate the spool using the overview pane on the right hand side. For Unix system services, you can set a directory as a filter from which the navigator lets you expand into children, directories, files, pop up menu actions and the ability to upload files from the PC directly. And again, you can open files in the editor area, allowing you to make changes that get saved directly back to the mainframe. The Zoe Explorer is an example of where a user who's already familiar with VS Code is able to work with mainframe data directly from within their IDE, doing editing files alongside other VS Code plugins, such as rich language editors or debuggers and more, 
creating a powerful, modern, extensible tools workbench to enhance their mainframe productivity experience. The third component to look at is the Zuri Desktop, allowing access to mainframe data and services using nothing more than a standard web browser. Users log into the desktop with their TSO user ID and password. Once logged in, a fly app menu shows a list of all of the available applications. Frequently used ones can be pinned to the bottom taskbar, which includes the file editor. This file editor lets you navigate USS directories and files, together with an editor pane that allows viewing and editing content. Syntax highlighting is provided for a number of file types which auto detects based upon the extension, but can also be managed selected to choose from a wide range of content types. The pop up menu in the navigator tree has actions for cut, copy, and paste, in place rename, the ability to tag files, as well as change ownership and permission of files, directories, including recursive updates. As well as working with USS content, the Navigator also allows you to work with datasets. Filtering by high-level qualifier, showing datasets and their members, also including syntax highlighting for JCL, Rex, Assembler, and other traditional mainframe languages. As well as rich GUI apps, the Zoe desktop also includes more traditional mainframe interfaces, such as its built-in 3270 emulator. From this, you can work with TSO, ISPF, SDSF, RACF, and other familiar mainframe commands. Zoe desktop apps are open side by side, allowing you to perform mainframe tasks with your preferred tool of choice. Apps running in the desktop are actually connected to each other in a number of different ways. They work under the initial logon credentials, so a user only has to sign on once to enter their password. This is also known as single sign-on, which can operate with extended security processes such as multi-factor authentication or client-side X509 certificates. Apps share these within the desktop and are able to register endpoints to communicate with each other, allowing a process called app-to-app -app communication and launching. App-to-app -app launching provides ability for desktop plugins to notify each other, send requests, and interact with each other. An example of this is the Jez Explorer. On its own, this can be used to filter and find jobs, look at their school files and issue commands. Running in the Zoe desktop, it publishes endpoints for these services, which allows a scenario where a user submits some JCL in the file editor to then have the Jez Explorer be open in the context of that submitted job ID. This up to up communication in the desktop enhances the entire end user experience, making it far greater than the sum of the parts of each individual app on its own, allowing a smooth transition and handoff of data and context to joined up tasks between individual plugins. Zoe Desktop also includes a number of utilities. It can switch languages that will operate across all of the plugins supporting that language, change the TSO user password for the user, as well as personalization. It provides the ability to change the color theme, icon sizes for the desktop, together with setting a custom background. So the desktop apps themselves aren't restricted to run as dials. They can be opened in their own browser tab, but they can be used like any other web page. A good use of this is for mainframers who are comfortable with 3270 interfaces. You can just launch the emulator in their own tab and access data without the need for any host emulation software on their laptop, as it's just running through their PC browser. A great way to think of the Zoe desktop and its apps is like a mobile phone. Both come with a great set of base software, but also have the ability to be extended through marketplace extensions. Zoe desktop is no different. Extension plugins can be provided by software vendors or even CASA themselves. Zoe Extended Documentation provides open source samples of how to do this, together with extensive SDK documentation. Software vendors can apply for Zoe Conformance Bags to demonstrate their plugin as built for these defined APIs, supporting interoperability and end user consistency. An example of apps that extend the Zoe desktop and have a conformance bag are Rocket Blue Zone Web and Sagus Engineering SQL Workload Assistant for DBT. 
Underpinning Zoe's core capabilities is a powerful API mediation layer based on Netflix Zool technology. This provides a catalog of API services on the main frame, allowing a user to actually browse and explore them, as well as experiment with their capabilities in place, viewing the query results. This actually allows developers and system programmers to write their own client applications sitting on top of this, benefiting from its features such as single sign-on, high availability, and more. The API mediation layer is the engine that provides all of these services to its sister components, the CLI, the Zoe Explorer, and the Zoe Desktop. As you've seen, Zoe provides base capabilities in its core to allow mainframes from all generations to enjoy access to the platform for a wide number of form factors. At its heart, are open source ideas that embrace APIs, extensibility, plugin-based architecture, certification program for vendors. More than the technology, however, Zoe is a vibrant community with participation from many software vendors, customers, students, open source advocates, IT professionals from across the globe. If you'd like to join us, please visit zoe.org. Thank you.